day one, you walk into the door with inner source and have no idea where to start. For me, this was actually my first job an inner source after I left the open source community space. And I Googled what inner source was a few days before my interview. I watched some of the inner source commons videos and read the patterns and walked in with an idea in mind. And it worked, lo and behold. But We've done this again over at Analog Devices, and we start with the end in mind. What is the ideal result? I ask, the first thing that I ask is, what do you want your developer experience to be? I want to know how they can improve um, the working environment, how they want to improve any space that engineers work in. So there is, this can be if you are starting a, um, an inner source program at your company or if you're applying for a new job. I, my job description is that I've started an inner source um, program. So I created my own playbook. I said, this is my method for starting and the only way that I can lay it out, though, is if I have the goal. So I, uh, you find out your goal, what you want, and from there, you can build a framework. Your framework is discovery. It is um, laying out to leadership what they, um, what they want to see and being realistic. The discovery phase does not take just a few days. It does not take a few weeks. It takes months. And we give the leadership um, small wins and lay out um, expectations. Going into a job interview, this is the same thing. You do not offer immediate successes, you offer expectations and ideas and goals. And based on those stages, what resources do you want? What do you need? You can't do it alone. You need a community. So building that community takes people and you can build that team by pulling from within the company, if you can identify the skills that already exist, you can pull from the inner source commons community, you can pull from the open source community or any people that have even an aptitude for what you are planning. Prime example, I jumped in with a week of research behind inner source before my first job in the field. <laughs> Um, you, that first painting a picture and that first presence that you give your program inspires confidence. It gives a, um, a level of, um, presence to the organization. It shows people that your, um, your ideas are solid and they're not just philosophy. You've put them on paper. Even if you have identified three teams that show some, some examples of good inner source practices, it's not a lot of discovery that has to go into these first stages. You can put the some of the patterns from inner source commons um, pattern book and you can identify maybe the first one that you're gonna do. Our example was um, the base repo documentation that teams could immediately go and grab. And that is information in the public domain. That is information that Intersource Commons has already provided. So it's not something that you have to um, 
take away from a prior position. It is something that you can say, I have identified this. It is provided to our community and I want to bring it to your organization. I want, if you're already there, I want to bring it to my organization. And it's showing your team and, oh, I'm sorry. Showing your team the stages and some of the first steps allow um, you to get um, a, give them a call to action. You ask for engagement, you give them a step and show them how they can be involved. You find your stakeholders and those people who want to be involved will become invested. It will become part of their idea and they will want it to happen and they will help push leadership to that point. And then publish your findings. It's as simple as when you've done your discovery phase, you put it all in your page and you show people what you have found. It can be as simple as here are the top four findings we found, or it can be in depth about every aspect of Intersource. That is up to you and what you think your company will respond to. Of course, always put your contact information there, make sure people can find you. Um, and when we started at both companies, I worked with a team of people to put together um, inner source customer interviews. And these were time to sit down and talk with other teams, find out what their, um, what their challenges were and build that discovery framework. I told the teams what our goals were and asked them for their help. Asking for help gained buy-in. It took months, as I said before, it is not weeks. And there is interview burnout. Don't push yourself to do five interviews a day and get 20 done in every week. Maybe ask for two. Putting a reasonable expectation will also help show that you need resources within your organization. And during this time, we looked for the pain points. We looked for existing initiatives and what already worked. Some teams said, we don't have any problems. We don't have any issues with collaboration. And I asked them why. I asked what they were doing that made them successful. And that either had them responding with, we use these set of tools that facilitate our collaboration, or, well, it could be better if we had this, but we're using this other tool. So I found pain points. And we looked for um, we looked for more connections. We asked for introductions, and we built a network around that because both of my experiences, we did not have a employee directory. We did not have any place to go and find centralized information. So, so building a network for inner source was the only way we could spread the word, and that was for interviews. So our promised report to the company was our final product in our framework stage. And we created a summary of our findings. It was the first step in the second stage. So this was the point where we were wrapping up our initial taking off the ground and giving leadership a solid start. We uh, reported the internal initiatives that already existed and were supporting Intersource and how it already existed in the company. This was a great way to boost their uh, morale because they knew they were already doing something right and that there was 
already an initiative in place so they didn't have to start from nothing, even if it was only one team who had one best practice. And then we summarized all of the pain points and the concerns and gave basic recommendations. gave basic recommendations around what should be addressed first. And finally, we used the best first practice pattern to identify teams for our pilot. And in this phase, pointing to exactly what the community has found is a best practice within the patterns book was helpful and important because it gave, it pointed to experts in the field and gave them confidence that we weren't making things up. That was a concern in the beginning was from high level leadership is, does this work? And pointing to 15 other companies who have done the same thing helped a lot. None of this happened without involving the community. We took the time to engage the community and ask for their, um, their experiences and give them a pat on the back or just encouragement for things they were already doing well and provide them with support. We never gave an immediate directive for what teams had to do because there was resistance. So we asked how, how we could help and got a group of interested people together from across the company who were ambassadors to their teams. This was organic. This happened through those interviews and it allowed people to, um, to make this their own. It was no longer something being pushed by the company as an initiative that had to happen or a methodology that they had to accept. It was, we didn't want it to be another, um, another process. We did not want them to have to have another directive that spent time and used their resources. So we, we gave them tools and it was slow buy-in, but it was effective buy-in. And then gave more validity to the company by using our best practices and submitting it as a pattern. The, it made everyone feel good that they had had success and were able to share their success with the community and asking for help from those other teams to create a pattern and to tell us what they thought would help other people made them our champions. We did not have to beg or plead for um, adoption when people really wanted to give back to the community, especially when you were able to inspire inner source culture within the organization. And at ADI now, we have a community team. And part of our inner source initiative is about five teams who are all working together. We are using existing um, pieces that are already in effect and already being created and tying that into inner source and using inner source as a way to point toward high level company goals. That has, we're only in our first four months at analog devices working on these best practices. And this has helped with high level leadership buy-in, it's helped us create roadmaps and it has given a direction based on that first question. What is our final goal? We determined that that goal is three years out. We will not reach it for three years because we are working with a company of tens of thousands of people 
And that will take time for adoption. It will take time to discover how many repos exist in the organization. But we are building small wins to get to that point. And that is, that's how you start from the ground and build up is just taking that moment to give a small win and encourage individual teams and small communities, make champions and facilitate success. And that's what I have today. Thank you.